Hey, Coach. Good evening. Um, first of all, just a few of the little things out of the way. Is Brandon Goodwin available in the starting lineup tonight for you? Uh, yes, and same starting lineup. Um, tell me, with this schedule, some of the biggest challenges getting ready here this evening for this group um, and what they present as well for you guys in order to come out with the victory. What are some of the keys tonight? Uh, just keep them out of the paint. These guys average 64, 64 and a half points in the paint in their three wins and 46 in their two losses. Um, you know, drastic difference in, you know, what you have to defend and what you can take away. And they do it in a, in a number of ways. Uh, and obviously in transition and off the live ball turnovers, do it through penetration and have a lot of offensive rebounding bigs that are capable of creating extra possessions and scoring down there as well. And I think Drummond does a great job of, of rim running and sailing and, and Nance you see is doing that as well. And so there's a, there's a lot of ways, but the bottom line is how do we keep them out of the paint? Thank you. Sarah. I know you touched on this a, a little bit the other day, but could you expand on what you saw from, from Brandon Goodwin? You know, I just, just kind of kept everybody in their role. Um, you know, with him being on the floor, you get to, to move Kevin and Bogey into some second side action. You get to send them off some pin downs and some catch and shoot situations, uh, as opposed to them always having to handle the basketball, especially against pressure and having to just be facilitators. I think their, their, their strengths for, for both Kevin and Bogey the ability to shoot off the pass, off the dribble, and if we can put them in those situations and 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 keep mixing it up, uh, I think we're playing to their strengths. And Brandon is a guy similar to Rondo um, that just can bring the ball up against the pressure, initiate the offense, and we can figure out who we can get going through our sets and our movement. Angel Gray. Thank you, Angel Gray, Fox Sports Ohio. Coach, you alluded to um, keeping the Cavs out of the paint, especially with Larry Nance and also Andre Drummond. But could you speak to just the growth of, or what you have seen from the Cavs backcourt, especially in Colin Sexton, who is, came in with Trey Young, and then as well as Darius Garland? Yeah, both of those guys have played well against us um, in, in the two games. We, we, I know we were scheduled to play them before the shutdown last year, but both of those guys have played extremely well against us. Uh, and they do a lot in the pick and rolls. They do a lot in the um, in just on normal penetration. They do a lot, obviously, in transition. Uh, but I think it's a dynamic group. Uh, they, they're, they're high volume shooters. They're both shooting well from the three. But a lot of their game is, is uh, dependent upon their ability to use the pick and rolls to get in the paint and create shots. Um, so we, we just got to do a good job, whether it's one on one defense and providing a crowd behind it or just making it tough for them and, and them having to see some contest over our length. And last question, Coach, if you, if at all, do you have a relationship with Coach Bickerstaff and your thoughts on what he is trying to do, um, just being in a situation where building and establishing a culture for a program, um, the things that go into that are the keys that go into that? Yeah, JB, I mean, I've known JB for a long time, um, you know, longer than uh, at least when before I got into the NBA. Uh, we had a mutual friend uh, who coached both of us at different places that uh, connected us early uh, and Vic Couch. And JB and I have spoken a lot uh, in the all season, obviously being on the, the coaches racial justice committee and dealing with a lot of the off court issues and, and the, some of the work that he's doing in Cleveland, some of the things that I've tried to do here in Atlanta and some of the things we've done through the coaches association. But at the same time, we've also spent a lot of time talking about you know, the newness of our programs, me being here for the third year and him taking over uh, in the middle of last year and just trying to create a culture and some of the things that they were doing when, when neither of us were in Orlando and some of the things that we were doing. So we, we speak all the time. He's probably going to come by the office in a little bit and just catch up while we can as well. Jamila Johnson. Hey, Coach. After a, a game like last night and a win last night, and with a, such a quick turnaround and it being so early in the season, do you find it kind of able, do you find you guys kind of able to celebrate that win or is it kind of just jump right into the next game? Uh, yeah, you know, I think in professional sports, you, you don't, it's hard to celebrate, um, you know, and it's hard to pout after losses. I think you have to have a mentality to, 
uh, enjoy that moment and appreciate that moment. Um, not get too high. I think it's the same thing after a loss. You, you know, you move on. And, you know, the season allows that to be pretty easy to do. You know, we, you know whatever the result of yesterday was, we still were going to have to play today. So uh, let's get as quickly, let's get rested, and let's get as quickly as we can focused on what we need to do to uh, defend Cleveland and be effective against Cleveland. Brad Rowland. Do you treat back-to-backs differently with any of these guys? Are there any limitations on players that you're watching? Is this, this is the first back-to-back of the season? Uh, no, I haven't thought about it at all. Um, you know, the, the we mentality that we speak of all the time is, is we're going to need everybody at some point during the year. And, um, you know, they'll, they'll let me know, and I'll be able to see if, if there's some fatigue from guys that played last night. But, uh, you know, it's early. It's our first back-to-back. I expect something – uh, from someone to be a little bit of an adjustment, and we'll figure it out. I think the the opponent really is going to dictate, you know, what our rotations look like. You know, hopefully we see a little bit more Bruno tonight because of the physicality of their bigs. Um, you know, that's one adjustment we, we may have to make. Uh, or maybe we can play small and, 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 you know, counter with their bigs with a different lineup. I don't know, but uh, definitely looking at all of those things uh, going into our first back-to-back and figuring out if we if we have to do something different and how we can keep it as normal as possible. Jacob Raw. Hey, Lloyd. I'm just wondering, you know, for the first five on the road, is it just kind of nice to finally get a week straight, basically, of being at home this year? Um, yeah, for me personally. Um, I think for the guys in the basketball, I think we all enjoy being home. But uh, once you're in the arena – there's no fans at either place. It's it's uh, we have to create our own energy, and so you know it's it's always going to be dependent upon us to create that energy, uh, be as connected as we can on the court and off the court in supporting each other. Uh, but from a personal standpoint, yeah, it's great to be home. And our final question will come from Kelly Kroll. Sorry, coach. Just one more health update. Um, Brajan, the knee soreness. Is there any reason to be concerned, or just one more night? Coming back to back, how's he Rajon, doing? Rajon Do you know? Rondo, he's got a knee, sore knee. <laughs> uh, just didn't go. And we're on a back to back. You know, I don't think there's a whole lot that's, that that changed. Um, you know, he's feeling better. He said he feels better. He's in there shooting free throws as I walked in to do my media. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I, when when Rondo is is knowing his body and being transparent about it, uh, I'll be fine. And I think that's what we'll always do throughout the entire time. But I, I don't see any other concerns. Um, you know, he woke up and knee was sore and, and we uh, sat him down and, and he'll let us know. We have a day off tomorrow and be ready to go on Monday and we'll figure out where he is.